So it's left to men like Davis Yance to fight. Lawyer R. Davis Yance says by doing this, the military may have violated the constitutional rights. Who has successfully defended naval law. You said it no, hurt. You, you said it hurts her. I shouldn't her. have to have a dying. baby because are, you want me. What'd you call it? They I are dying. Have to have a baby. So you should be able to those kill the baby. Those are so yes. poor. There you go. They Did are, you? They are, hey, they are you should listen to what she just said. What you said? If I, I want to kill my baby, I'm gonna kill that. Thank you. You Seriously? said women I don't, you don't take yeah. pleasure in it. There That's how we started. She go. just. You're, you're generalizing. No, yeah. no, no. She just. Like, she just refuted your like, position. Is she, is she speaking on behalf of all women? I'm, but I just showed know, you that this is the face of abortion. Yeah. You tried to protect it. This is the real face. She yeah. said, I should be able to kill that yeah. shit if I want to, yeah. her baby. And I will. There you have it as Ohio voters ram through abortion in their state constitution as a right, subject to very few restrictions. If you read feminist authors and what that woman was saying in that clip we just watched from End Abortion Now is exactly what they've been saying for decades, even while they hid behind safe, legal, rare, as a lie to Trojan horse smuggle in their ultimate goal. They take a perverse, paganistic delight in the idea of the female body being unique and its capacity to create new life, because in the opposite of that is having the unique capacity to snuff out that very same new life, making them the god over who lives and who dies. You see that concept repeated a lot in pagan religions like Hinduism or even in ancient Egypt, where you might have a god or goddess who is master of life and death or of love and hate at the same time. You have to remember that many ideologies on the left are at war with reality, which means they are at war against the way God created things to be. And they play with philosophical calculations in order to arrive at their predetermined conclusion, which is to justify doing whatever they want, whenever they want, with whoever they want, wherever they want, regardless of who gets hurt in the process. And that's why they fight so hard for abortion, even those lesbian, feminists, and trans women and others who are never going to be able to get pregnant themselves. They can still be found screaming until the veins bulge in their necks and they start convulsing like the possessed in support of abortion because to them, it is the ultimate symbol that no one, not even the innocent babe in their own womb, can ever force them into any moral obligation or duty towards another. Even when Christ explicitly says in the Bible that the two greatest commandments are to love God first above all things and to love your neighbor as yourself. They spit on that. It's a proxy war against God. It's a replacement of worship of the Holy Trinity with the worship of me, myself, and I. They can't kill God when they echo Lucifer's damning words, I will not serve, but they can go after the weakest of God's exalted creatures, of whom Christ said, what you do to these least of mine, you do directly unto me. And so for that reason, I'm not shocked at all to hear more abortion activists finally being honest about their position, that they know it's a living human baby inside their womb and they simply don't care. They know it's not a clump of cells or that other garbage they feed to their dumb followers who don't know any better. To them, they have the right to not only kill that baby, but to relish in its demise and in the helplessness it faces at the foot of the altar to their ultimate authority over its life. And if you think I'm talking like a quack who's putting my own bizarre fantasies into their mouth, then that simply means you haven't read any pro-abortion feminist authors. They are heavily influenced by pagan and even demonic beliefs. Just one more note on this before I turn to another related headline is that you probably also notice that many feminists exalt in believing themselves to be the gates of new life. They see themselves as the earth goddess, Gaia, as mother earth. But notice how they omit the role men play in begetting new life. What Joining us now to discuss all this and more is military defense attorney Davis Yance. Davis, thanks for being here tonight. Hey, good evening. Great, so I started off talking about Ohio, and right there we just saw Ohio voters want us to believe that abortion is some God-given right to be enshrined into their state constitution, and it was celebrated, I'm sure you saw, by tears of joy streaming down their faces of all those who voted in favor, jumping up and down. It was disgusting, and we see these sick celebrations every time abortion access passes. I mean, what do you make of the macabre spectacle? It's really hard to understand unless we are willing to engage in a discussion of religious faith and worldview. You said it really well in the monologue. This is a question of, are we going to worship God or worship man? And when we choose to ignore God, ignore creator God and begin to worship man, not only do we begin to belittle and just disregard human life that we decide not to care about, we elevate issues like this and we become fascinated with it. And it does become a pagan ritual. It becomes what we have seen throughout human history. When God is rejected, ultimately people begin to worship man and it leads to human sacrifice. This is the level of zealotry we see on these issues. What we need to be talking about is 
is life, the preservation of all life, respect for all life and equal protection at all stages of human life from fertilization to natural death. That's what we should be focusing on. When we abandon that, this is what we get. And it is deeply concerning because it has so many religious overtones. That it doesn't. Ohio seen as being more of a red state. Same thing with Kentucky, and yet we saw big losses in both yesterday, last night. So now you're seeing a lot of Republican strategists, and they're coming out and they're saying abortion is a losing issue. They'll tell us that ever since Roe's overturning last year by the Supreme Court, that in all the elections since, abortion has been a losing issue. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that, but that is what we're hearing from a lot of these Republican strategists. So what they're now recommending is that we basically pull back on it. And I saw some joking online when I asked the poll question about it. They were saying pull back on message on abortion messaging. Has have Republicans ever been that strong on it in the first place, which I thought was funny because it's definitely true. But what do you make of some of these strategists saying, well, basically, let's admit defeat, I guess, in the face of a, a, a horrible paganistic demonic type culture. And let's just get rid of the abortion issue or let's not talk about it or like, let's play footsies with the left. I mean, what do you make of some of that those recommendations we've been hearing? Well, they bother me on on two two levels. So first is just uh, let's talk about the political strategy. If you are trying to win on an issue, but all you're doing is compromising, where the other side has a religious fervor in their, you know, in their zealotry for it, you are always going to lose. So if what you are starting from is a you know a position of exception and compromise, I believe you're going to lose politically. And we can see that. Look. Look at Florida, look at Iowa. You have two governors in each of those states who are extremely conservative, who have doubled down on these issues, and they've turned those states from purple at best to deep red by not compromising on fundamental issues like the life issue. So politically, I think starting with exceptions and starting with compromise is a failed political strategy. It's absolutely a failed strategy. It was a failed strategy in Ohio. But the second level, and I think just as important, is the spiritual warfare aspect of this. We don't go into spiritual warfare by without bringing the Bible and prayer and truth with us. If we think we're going to engage spiritual warfare, demon worship, pagan religion, without the Bible, without faith in Christ, we're going to lose every time, as we've lost throughout history, every time that that's been attempted. So, you know, I strongly disagree with anyone who thinks compromise is the answer. We need to be talking about life and equal protection of all life. That we do. And like you said, there are so many politicians who run very pro-life campaigns, even in more purplish type areas. And yet they win and they can win and they have one and they will continue to do so. So it's not an all out losing issue, though. Some defeatists want us to think that way. And even let's say it's just so horrifically unpopular, even on the right and the left, you know, abortion and, and wanting to protect all life from conception till natural death. What does that again say about our society that that would be an unpopular statement? But just look at the left and look at how much they've been able to win in our not only our culture, but also in all of our institutions, transgenderism, abortion on demand, open borders, all these other policies that most people, when you poll them, they don't like that. They don't want to go for that. And yet the left has taken over everything. It was a top down approach. They captured those top key positions of propaganda, of influence, of power. And then a lot of Americans just started going along with them. So I think that says a lot right there that maybe we could look to that pattern instead of trying to be mealy mouthed about what we believe in. I mean, we should be standing for God and trusting that he will see us through anything, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against him and his church. And I think also perhaps that's the problem as I'm thinking about it right now, is that since we're not trusting in him to reign here on earth through us and through our activities, and we make these compromises because we're afraid, that's why we lose, because we need to stand strong and to believe in him and his promises, and then that will win the day, do you think? No, you're absolutely right. And part of the problem is churches. I mean, I would ask the question, if you're an Ohio voter, did your church last Sunday, did your parish last Sunday emphasize the importance of going out and voting for life? And I'll submit to you the pastors that I'm talking to, others that I'm talking to in Ohio, that was just not the case. They just abandoned the public square in this issue. They are not bringing Christ to the public square. They're not bringing Christ to bear on these issues. And so if the churches are not fighting back on these issues and at least standing for something so plain as protecting human life, we're going to continue to lose these battles. So we need a spiritual revival, which in turn will bring about a political revival and will bring revival in these institutions. But that's absolutely the fundamental issue. Compromise cannot win. We need to start with truth, bring truth. We can talk about exceptions and exemptions after that, 
But if we don't begin with the fundamental truth of equal protection of all life, we will continue to lose these fights. And we can't be afraid to look like we're the, the fanatics. I mean, look at the left. They've unveiled themselves so much at this point where they used to do the lie and the little song and dance about, oh, it's a clump of cells. It's not even a baby. It's not even real. It's like getting your teeth extracted. And you'll still hear that kind of rhetoric, but they don't really believe it. When you push someone on this, like we just heard from that feminist at the beginning, is they're like, I know it's a baby. That's why it's called a baby shower. No one calls it a fetus shower. We all know it's a baby. They only they call it a baby when they want the child. When they don't want the child, next thing you know, they try and dance around and pretend it's you know, some something completely different. And fetus, even in Latin, just means little child. But now a lot of them are just being so open, going, yeah, it's a human. It's a living baby inside me. It's my child, and I don't care. I want to kill it. And some of them very much relish it, and they will take delight, saying, I want to purposely get pregnant just to purposely kill the child. It's kind of like with a lot of the drag queen story hours, a lot of the right misunderstood thinking, well, if only we expose the sexual degeneracy that they want to expose nude adults to children, that that will somehow win of, over everyone. But now we're seeing a lot of these left-wing parents, they brought their kids to those sexual naked displays purposely for the express purpose of their kids seeing that display and giving dollar bills to those poor actors or whatever they are on stage. That means this fight is so much bigger and scarier than I think a lot of us are imagining, which is why we need Christ to fight through because we can't do it on our own. All things are through Christ. But Davis, thank you so much for spending time with us tonight.